Hello and welcome to In Novato. I'm your host, Pam Hazley, and we're opening up this month's show from Body Kinetics with a love to dance. Dancers are rehearsing for the Big Warriors game this coming Tuesday. But before we see the rest of that, in this month's show, we'll feature... To ring in the new year, the DMBA held their second annual ball drop, a family-friendly event. Novato spent the month painting the town red and celebrating its birthday. And it was a good time for cars as NCTV checks out GMP and the Electric Vehicle Expo. And now let's follow them on their journey to the Warriors game. I grew up dancing at Love to Dance Novato. Uh, my dance teachers were warrior girls back in the day. Um, so in high school, I got to come see them perform, and that's how I got inspired. All right, everybody, have a seat. How long have you been performing? Your kids been performing at the Golden State Warriors? We've been performing there since 2003. Back then I was a dancer for the Warriors and that's when we first had our opportunity to perform at halftime. So we've been going every year ever since. So what's it mean to you then every year to be doing this? Is it still fun and exciting? Oh gosh, it's the best feeling. The kids love it, the families love it. So are the kids super excited? Are there some scared? Or? Some are scared and nervous, but for the most part they're really excited. This will be the biggest crowd they've ever performed. Up to 20,000 people could be there watching. How excited are you to be performing at the Golden State Warriors? Really exciting. But I know you've done other, na not maybe national things, but lots of competitions, right. but this has to be one that st really stands out. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Everybody's really excited about it. They've been working hard, practicing. and We saw you in rehearsal yesterday, and I was looking, there must be, what, 70 kids there? So we actually have 102 in halftime. It's our largest group ever. And this year, something new that we've never done before, we're performing at the primetime spot, which is before tip-off as well. So we have about 48 dancers at that time. So what's it mean to you being a cheerleader and then having these kids wanting to do this and just what's it feel like? Oh, it's a nice full circle moment. It's part of the reason I opened Love to Dance is when I was dancing for the Warriors, I realized how much I love dancing. The team aspect was important to me and I wanted to bring it to the community of Novato. So I'm really happy I've been able to do this and continue uh, bringing all the dancers, the all-stars, plus opening up to the studio so that any kid five and up can go and dance with us. And it's not just all girls either, right? No, we have a couple of boys out there, which is great. <laughs> what do the kids gain from this experience? Oh, they gain a lot of confidence and exposure. Um, they are proud of themselves because they've set this goal. We started back in December with the rehearsal and it's been really important for them to memorize all these steps and then standing in the formation is difficult. They also have to think about being in the big arena, which is different than performing on a stage because we don't have one front. There's audience all around. So it's like they're dancing in a giant fishbowl. So it's, it's a great challenge for them because we get on the court and it's a bit overwhelming to have all these people staring at you and have the announcement and then their faces are on the jumbo screen, on the jumbotron. Uh, people have cameras in their faces which they're not used to when they're dancing. So it's really nice for the dancers to have this experience. Well, what does this mean for the Nevada community to have Love to Dance there? I think it's pretty exciting for our little old town of Nevada to be involved with the Warriors organization because everybody here obviously is excited about the Warriors uh, championships for a number of years and all the talented players. Now you have uh, levels from five, as you said, five years old, all the way up to all-stars. What's it mean to be an all-star dancer? Okay, so our all-stars are a competitive team, so they travel to different dance competitions. They also perform around at different community events. Uh, they usually train three to five days a week. They do ballet, jazz, tap, contemporary, acrobatics, lyrical, so they're really into dance. Dance is their niche. It's their thing that they found that they love and um, we're a big family. So if nobody has ever danced before or maybe they haven't danced in a while, what do you have to say to encourage people to come out? And join? Oh gosh, that's the great thing about Love to Dance. We have a place for everyone. Um, all you have to do is have the desire to move and love music and we can help you to find your inner rhythm and your beat. So you're never too old to start? No, definitely not. We have adults that dance, and uh, we actually have two adults that are going to be dancing in the halftime and the prime time. I'm one of them. <laughs> so. And so when you get out there, are you nervous, excited? Uh, I get excited, and now it just brings me back to my younger years when I was out there with all my warriors 
girls, sisters, and uh, we used to have such a great time at all the games, so it brings back good memories for me. The other thing that was challenging for the All-Stars, we got the primetime performance opportunity really late. We didn't hear about it until about two weeks ago. So they had to learn, not only did they have to learn the halftime choreography, they had to learn the primetime choreography. And uh, two weeks ago, we had a recital. So we really just had this last week to solidify and get all the choreography. So that group of All-Stars, they're definitely really talented that they were able to remember all that choreography. Describe the difference between the halftime performance and the primetime performance. Okay, so our halftime performance has the 102 dancers, which involves our ages five and up. Um, it's a four minute routine, and it's gonna be great because all the fans are out there before they go to get their snacks or <laughs> during halftime. Uh, the primetime performance is prior to tip off. Um, it's actually gonna be a six minute routine, and it's just featuring the Love to Dance All Stars. It's just a little bit different energy, different vibe, but both routines are equally great and fun. So from the meeting point and the Warriors Arena, we meet way up top in section 223. Okay, so the parents are gonna drop their kids with us. The parents are excited and nervous. The kids are excited and nervous. We'll do a roll call and then we line everyone up in the stairwell. From there, we walk all the way down to the bottom floor and there's a backstage area, um, which we call the tunnel, where we're gonna rehearse and get oriented with the direction that we're gonna face and make sure everyone's there and ready to go. Then we're gonna line up single file to get ready to enter the court. Well, let's continue uh, watching uh, Love to Dance on their journey to uh, the Golden State Warriors performance. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Excited. So how's it feel to see the Love to Dance dancers where you started? I love seeing them out here. It's really special. It's like home away from home. Um, I love to see them have fun and uh, show off what they're passionate about. They work hard and they put in a lot of time to do that. It takes a lot of um, confidence to get out there in front of that many people. So, Are you proud of them? Because there's some of them five, six years old. Yeah, I'm very proud of them. It's To find something that you're passionate about at such a young age is kind of rare. and. I say when you find that happiness, you stick with it. Would that be your words of inspiration or advice to them if they want to become a professional dancer someday? Absolutely. Just always be confident and believe in yourself and work hard. Go Warriors! Go
probably like brag about like I got to be on the Warriors court. Like what did you do? I want to do it every year. It's just like so exciting. I mean it. It's weird to see that like we're actually performing for like one of the best teams in the world right now and it's crazy. Do you love to dance? We love to dance! The DNBA's annual ball drop brought the community together at Machen and Sweetser to experience the sight of 18,000 bouncy balls being dropped to ring in the new year. It's so exciting to be here at the 2017 ball drop, the biggest ball drop in the entire country. We're so proud of that. We're proud to host it. We're proud to see everyone come out here on this beautiful day, and we can't wait to catch as many balls as we can. Uh, Novato's great. It's a great community. Everybody bands together at the end of the year here to provide a great little event, kick off the new year right. Everyone in, in our downtown businesses are really stepping up these last few years to really do us a great job for the city of Novato. It's a central part of what they feel about this town and it needs to be a place that we can congregate and have a great time down here. So I'm really happy to be here today, see all these kids and parents and everyone having a great time. It was pretty incredible to see all the balls drop at one time and all the kids totally excited. Definitely an event to do every single year. It was wonderful. This is such a great event for the city of Novato, bringing all these young families down. This was an amazing once in a lifetime experience. The kids loved it and the adults had a great time too. It just makes me happy, honestly. It's always fun to, to see the smiling faces and know that it's been executed and, and it's fun. It's always a great time to get the city out after a, to celebrate the New Year's for 2018. What a fun, fun experience and a great day. Have a great 2018. We'll see you next year. Novato painted the town red for the whole month of January. First, the Novato Chamber held its honors dinner, recognizing the small and large businesses of the year. Then at the Novato birthday party at the Buck Institute, the town celebrated its history and announced the new citizen of the year. And finally, for the first time ever, the Paint the Town Red Committee held a free family birthday party to celebrate the youth volunteer of the year. Hi, good evening. We are at our annual Novato Chamber Honors Dinner, which used to be called the Board and Installation Dinner. And this event does a number of different things. This is where we install our new board and thank our previous year's board. Uh, but we also at this event name our small and large business of the year. It's a really exciting event. We get to you know, reminisce and, and really celebrate all of our wins from 2017 and really look forward to 2018. I think for me I'm most excited about the sponsor and volunteer of the year. These are two brand new awards that we're giving out. These are staff awards. We work with hundreds of people throughout the year and this is our way of saying thank you personally. And my favorite part of this event is just being able to be with people that we usually are in work mode and getting things done for, for events and this is my opportunity to really get to know people on a, on a deeper, more intimate level. Oh man, I would absolutely love anybody to come. Everybody is welcome. Um, this year we are doing something new and we are recognizing our sponsor and volunteer of the year and that could be you next year. So please register, register early, reserve your spot. This is our first year that we've actually sold out completely. So we're really excited. Um, this year we're also unveiling our new branding which you could see all around us. And so we've got a lot of exciting things happening this year and we would love everybody to be a part. Novato's birthday party is produced annually by Novato Paint the Town Red, a 501c7 tax-exempt organization. Paint the Town Red is administered by a volunteer board of directors to fulfill its civic mission of planning and executing Novato's birthday party with the help of the event planning committee and relying upon the Citizen of the Year committee to select the Citizen of the Year. The 2016 Citizen of the Year, Eugenia McLean. I am so proud 
I'm proud of you, my dear, for all that you've done. And I'm actually proud that we kept it from you until tonight. What a secret. I found that the citizens of the year have three main things in common. They all love Novato. They also are all passionate about certain activities within Novato. They may be very diverse in those activities, but they all really jump in full force and, and get involved. And then the third thing is that even though they get this award, they don't sit back and do nothing. They continue to embrace this community and stay involved. I'm really proud to be among that good company. What was really meaningful for me that evening was that Dietrich Stroh made the presentation to me. And as it turned out, it was his last presentation of the Citizen of the Year Award, which he loved to do with great passion. He loved finding out little tidbits about the Citizen of the Year nominee. He loved dropping the hints to try to build suspense with the audience and then finally making the announcement and seeing the radiant smile on whoever was the recipient of the Novato Citizen of the Year. Another component of the annual event is the announcement of the Small and Large Businesses of the Year nominated by Novato Chamber of Commerce members. This is the first year of holding Novato's birthday party at the Majestic Buck Institute for Research on Aging. Sadly, this also marks the first year that the longtime president of Paint the Town Red and former Citizen of the Year himself, Dietrich Stroh, will not be in attendance. Diet sadly passed away unexpectedly on May 31, 2017. This year's event is a tribute to our beloved friend, colleague, and passionate community volunteer, Diet Stroh. It's good for the Wattawans to know each other because we live, a lot of us live diverse lives. We don't, we're not involved in the community, but this way you can become involved in the community. I'm a very traditional person and I, I want to see this thing continue forever, so to speak, because it does bring people in Nevada together. We're here at Novato City Hall celebrating the first annual Novato Family Birthday Party. We are at City Hall doing the second City Birthday Party event and it's absolutely fantastic. This is free to the community and we had great weather, great event, great community and it's just such a pleasure to celebrate Novato this way with everybody. So today we were celebrating Novato's first annual Youth Volunteer of the Year honored on behalf of Dietrich Stroh, one of the founders of Paint the Town Red. I love Novato, so it's, it's nice to be recognized by them. Yeah, I look forward to continuing working to make Novato a better place. <laughs> uh, when I found out that I was nominated by the Rotary Club Ignacio, I was really honored and I was happy that they gave it to me. I've been working with them for years before I went into high school and just being able to work with them all the time and being nominated with such other amazing people as well. It really was a privilege and I was excited about it. Oh, it was great being in the room today. I was surrounded by people that make this community the place that it is. We had past citizens of the year, future citizens of the year, three, four, five year olds playing with Legos, having a great day. I would like to recognize Lisa Pasolkin as our first annual Youth Bowl and Teacher Story. Well, it made me feel really great and honored to be in such good company. Um, Novato has the best of the best, and it's really just humbling to be even mentioned next to all of these people. I want to look into political science or international relations and maybe go into politics or law, and volunteering has definitely shown me a path for my future. I want to thank my parents and my sister, who I wouldn't be here without, and my whole family and teachers and everyone that has supported me because I definitely couldn't do this without all of them. Every single applicant, what their qualifications for the award were amazing. Hundreds if not thousands of hours combined between them. One of the volunteers had volunteered over 600 hours just this last year. So we're in good hands going forward because if, with youth like this in our community, Novato has nowhere to go but up in the future. It's been a good month for cars. NCTV was at the Novato Electric Vehicle Expo to help spread the word about the future of transportation. 
Then we take a look at a local Novato business that specializes in exotic car restoration and maintenance. So today we're at the first EV Expo. The intent of today's event is to present the latest vehicles coming off the production line, people to get a sense of uh, what it is to drive electric. Today we're here to talk to residents of Novato and Marin about the fantastic opportunities uh, for EV driving. There are so many new possibilities. Roughly half of the emissions, maybe even more in Marin, are from uh, internal combustion engine cars. Electric cars produce no emissions. They cost less to operate than gas cars, and they're far more fun to drive. This event is an opportunity to show people some of the 13 different electric cars that are available to Marin drivers, and a chance to drive some of them and see what they're missing if they're still driving a gas car. Well, to be honest, there's never been a better time to go electric because the, the, there's a lot of budget models that are coming on board. Marin has a really high rate of registrations for electric vehicles, so it's something that we see growing exponentially. Seeing all of these people out here with their cars, their enthusiasm, and their commitment to making this happen, we know we can hope and we know we can resist. So one of the great things about uh, going electric right now is that there, there's a $7,500 tax credit available and a $2,500 rebate from the state of California. And if you install a EV charger at home, PG&E or MCE will give you a $500 rebate to install a charging point. So like I said, it's never been a better time to go electric. It's the future. I mean, we all have to be driving electric cars and getting off of fossil fuels. It's, it's the future. We're a big restoration shop. That's what we're known for. We specialize uh, in exotic work. I joined the chamber because I'm a big supporter of uh, the community that I'm, that I'm a part of. It's very important that you're, you're working together because we all have the same interests. Uh, meaning I want to support what I'm doing in the community and I, I want to make sure that the community is aware of my businesses and that I live here too. I live in Belmarine Keys. I've lived here for the last 15 years but it's a great location in regards to uh, what I'm doing and to have two buildings together uh, in one spot. I actually have three, one around the block but it's very convenient for what uh, we're doing with a one-stop shop I put together the best mechanics in the Bay Area. There's nothing like this anywhere in the United States that I'm aware of where you can come in and have all these different things done to your car that are a high-end level. In regards to my customers, um, they're all my friends too. So they can trust me and they know that they're going to get uh, what they're looking for because I think the same way they do. It's really what it's all about. So, I'm meaning where I live is where I work, and uh, you know it's important to me. And uh, you know I live in God's country is the bottom line as far as I'm concerned, and Nevada's a part of that. So it's a big part of it. I love living here. Finally, Nevada had to say farewell to our longtime fire chief Mark Hine. We say our goodbyes at his retirement party and return with his words of gratitude for the Nevada community. Well, we're here at Station 61 at the Novato Fire District, where the community has come together to say goodbye to the retiring fire chief, Mark Hine, and to welcome in the new chief, Bill Tyler. We're here to just show my extreme gratitude to Chief Hine for everything he did over 32 years of keeping our entire community safe. It's always sad to see someone that you really respect and honor to go, so um, congratulations, Chief Hine. He's an amazing leader. He's team, he's strategic, he's smart, and just thankful for his friendship and for all the professional great work he did for this community. Saving lives every day, serving us, protecting people. He's going to go on to do great things, and we couldn't thank him enough for the last 32 years of incredible service to this city. So to the residents of Novato, I want to say thank you because for 32 years uh, you've invited me to serve you in the fire district for the last five years. You've allowed me to serve you as fire chief. It's been a distinct honor for me. You've always been extremely supportive of the Novato Fire District and of me in the fire chief role. So I really want to just say the message, thank you.
Well, we've made it full circle. We've watched uh, the Love to Dance dancers rehearsing. We saw them rehearsing behind the scenes at the Oracle Arena. And now here we are back at Love to Dance in Novato. I'm wearing my ballet pink and the spirit of dance. And how did it go? How do, what do you think? How do you feel after performing now? Oh, we feel great. The children did a wonderful job. The parents were happy and I had a lot of fun. You look like you're having a lot of fun. We got we focused on you a lot. You're always smiling and energetic. And I I know I used to be a dancer for about 40 years, so I know the technique and the practice that goes into what you guys did. I mean, the stamina that you have to have. I mean, how do the dancers feel? Do they want to do it again? Oh yes, they were excited. Coming off the court, they were waving and cheering and clapping, and then they immediately said, "We want to do it again. We wish we could go back out. You know, I'm doing this every year." So it was a really good special moment for us. Well, Tara, I want to personally thank you on behalf of NCTV for inviting us to document this very exciting experience. I personally have never seen an NBA game. It was my first time. <laughs> so it was just exhilarating. I'm still excited about it. I love the footage that we got, and it's, it's really important and meaningful to me personally as well as professionally. I just wanted to thank you in person. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming to do it. You did such an amazing job, and we are really proud to represent Novato and have you there to share with us. Well, go Warriors. I'm hooked now. <laughs> so that's our show for this month. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Pam Hazley. And tune in next time because we have been nominated for an award. So uh, tune into the next month's show to find out if we're taking home the prize. All right. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here in Novato. If you have ideas for a show segment or a local event you'd like to feature, we'd love to hear from you. Just send us an email to info at novatotelevision.tv and we'll contact you about possibly airing your show idea or event. Please visit our website to learn more about NCTV and like us on our Facebook page. And be sure to tune in next month to see what your local government, nonprofit businesses, and community volunteers have been working on right here in Novato.